In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We read today a passage from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, in which St. Paul speaks of a very important notion, one that is really a recurrent in his epistles about us being the temple of the living God. Antum haykalullah al hayy. That God lives in you. And really, most of the passage that we heard from Paul, most of it was a big quote from the Old Testament that came from Leviticus and Isaiah and the same verses found in different books in the Old Testament. But the point is that Paul starts with a, with a verse. He says, you are the, the temple of the living God. And then he quotes a big quote. Most of the passage is a direct quote from the Old Testament. The notion of us being the temple of the living God is a key notion because it reminds us that we literally receive God, the Holy Spirit, in our bodies and souls when we are baptized. When you are baptized, you receive God into you. So God becomes living in you, dwelling inside you. And then also, as, we, as you know and as we believe very firmly, that by receiving the body and blood of our Lord in Holy Communion, God also dwells in us. God enters your body and soul and He lives in you. You become a temple every time we receive the Communion. And not only every time, there's no like a, an expiry date if you commune on Sunday, you become a temple of the living God for a week, and then if you don't come next Sunday, you're no more a temple of God. No, it's a continuous effect, right? Some people say, I commune today, so I shouldn't sin today. Well, the effect of communion is, uh, uh, is, is not bound to, to time. So, you become a temple, you carry God in you, you become like, if we can say, if we can imagine it, why, why do you become a temple? Because a temple and a church. And we believe that God dwells in His church, in His temple. A temple is where the, the God dwells most prominently. So if you are a temple and you are walking, you leave on Sunday here, you leave the church and then you're walking around in the city of Ottawa, it's like you are a walking church. Each of us is like a walking church. A walking altar. And these are very important no notions. And I'm going to go to my next point to expand more on that. So being temples of the living God, however, and this is the, the really the main point of St. Paul, comes with great responsibility. That's the point. We can't get the privilege without the responsibility. And we often forget this responsibility. We feel privileged to be Christian. We feel privileged to be the temples of God. But then we often forget to live as temples of God, as a walking church. It's like sometimes we want the perks of this blessing, of this prestige. You know, I'm a Christian, I commune, I receive the body of Christ. I'm a baptized Christian, I receive the Holy Spirit. We want the perks of it, the good things, the easy things, but we don't want the responsibility that comes with it. What is this responsibility? The responsibility according to St. Paul, according to this big quote he quotes from the Old Testament, is that we have to touch nothing unclean. لا تمس نجسا, he says. Touch nothing that is unclean. That is sin. Do not touch sin. 
And that he says, we have to come out from them. We have to separate from them. Who are these them he's speaking about? Come out from them. Separate from them. We have to separate. We have to come out. We have to escape from sin. And from all the things that lead us to temptation and to sin. Sometimes these things that lead us to temptation and sin are people. We have to separate from them. After trying to make it work with them, sometimes we have to separate from these people. Sometimes we have to separate from places. Sometimes we have to separate from activities that we do. From sometimes from ideas that we have. Sometimes from hobbies or habits that we have. We have to cleanse ourselves, Paul says. We have to cleanse ourselves from the defilement of the body and the spirit. نطهر أنفسنا من دنس الجسد والروح, he says. And obviously this doesn't mean that we have to be holy and perfect or else you have to be cast out from the church. This is not what the Bible is saying. And you have to be holy to be a Christian. No. Obviously we know this is not feasible. Also. That for you to become a member of the church, you have to be holy. It's not feasible. Actually, God is the God of sinners. And He is God, a God of sick people. And the church as defined by many of our fathers, and we repeat this, is also called a hospital to which we bring our illnesses and sicknesses. But what this passage implies is that we need to at least start by acknowledging our illness. In other words, we cannot have the best of both worlds. It's like saying, you know what, I want this great blessing that Christianity offers me, unity with God, I want this blessing, but you know what, don't tell me that some of the things that I do or believe are dangerous. Don't tell me that some of my habits will make my soul sick. Don't give me any of this. But I want the perks of being a Christian. I'm a Christian. It's a great blessing. Being separated from sin applies to all kinds of sins. But it is obvious I think at least that it is obvious that Paul wants to put an, an emphasis on the immoralities of the body. The dangerous and difficult things to be healed from. Let me try to give a few examples of things that we must separate from if we are to receive God in our bodies and, and spirits. In our days, for example, we can speak of many things. Most danger dangerously, pornography, alcohol, drugs, gambling and casinos, sexual immorality of any, of any kind, of any sort and form. Then we can also speak about other things that might include social media, addiction to social media, misuse of, of social media, gossip, envy, gluttony, and among other things. These are all defilements of body and spirit. And we have the responsibility as temples of the living God to cleanse ourselves from. Again and again. You don't have to already be cleansed to be in the church. You don't have to be holy to be in the church. You don't have to be 100% purified, for example, because we spoke about communion, to receive Holy Communion. Because who of us can say that he is, he or she are 100% purified? No one can. No one will ever say that because... Anyways, holy people will never say that about themselves, by the way. So we gave the example of communion. 
You are not to be perfect to approach communion, for example, but we need to at least acknowledge this need to be cleansed and at least start doing something about it. We can't keep going and say, I'm a Christian, I want to go to church, I want to receive Holy Communion. At the same time, I will not acknowledge any of the bad habits I have. Don't speak to me about the things that, that I do or say or, or believe in. This is where we have to kind of set the, the compass. The process of how to be cleansed, because that's the most important thing. We're speaking about being cleansed, but how to be cleansed. And obviously I, I cannot go into detail with everything in one sermon. But we will continue addressing this in the future. And, and we always need to address this. How to be cleansed from the defilement of the body and the soul. What things we can do to be able to achieve this. But as I've mentioned before, and I mentioned all the time to you guys, I mentioned this to our youth in, in counseling, in confession, I always mention this. Sometimes all we need to do is to flee away from the stimuli, from this situations, the settings that make you vulnerable, the, the settings that position you in a vulnerable way to fall to temptation. And if I know that every time I go to a casino, I'm going to gamble, I stop going to the casino. I don't go there and expect that to have a different result. I, I don't keep playing with fire expecting to have different results. If I know that, if I hang out with certain people, okay, I'm going to swear a lot every time. And this has been going and going on. I'm going to speak about bad things. I'm going to gossip about people and whatever you want. Eventually, I might have to stop seeing these people. I might have to sacrifice some relationships. Not the first step. The first step is to speak with the people I love and try to tell them that I don't want to be engaged in these kind of activities. Whether it's sexual immorality, whether it's uh, 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 gambling, whether it's uh, drinking a lot, whether it's whatever it is. Whatever it is. But eventually, there might be a point where we need to physically withdraw from the setting or else we wouldn't be able to purify ourselves from the defilement of the spirit and, and body. And St. Paul says that we have to. We have to purify ourselves to be able to be called sons and daughters of God. Yes, we are sons and daughters by virtue of adoption and baptism. But we have to sign these papers of adoption. As an adult now, as a baby, spiritually and maybe physically, you were given this adoption. As an adult, you might decide that you don't want nothing to do, to do with this, with this uh, uh, adoption, with this father. So this, this defilement of the uh, flesh and body being purified from them is our, again we can call it our yes to God, our approval of this adoption or whatever it is. These are words, obviously, as you know, I have said repetitively in my sermons. And as I always tell you, I say this to myself before to any of you. And today is a simple reminder from St. Paul of the awesome blessing that we carry, but also of the great responsibility that comes with it. We need, beloved in Christ, to be Orthodox Christians on purpose and not by coincidence. Always remind yourself of this. We need to be followers of Christ on purpose, not just by coincidence. May God grant us this be our Lord, and may glory be given to Him always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.